Hey guys, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, and I want to show you one of my favorite tips for using tracks in Arrangement View. So if I press play on this track here, let it play, um, if you've led worship with tracks before and you've tried to speak over an intro or you've tried to share scripture or even pray, you know there's two things happen. Either in the back of your mind, you're constantly thinking, how much space do I have left? And you're trying to wrap up and you do the thing where you talk really quickly to try to fit in whatever you're going to say before the verse. Or you're in a situation where you've pre-thought everything out and you have to stretch out your words just long enough uh, so that everything fits in that space. Or maybe you're even the person that is triggering content, triggering loops. So as you're talking, you have to think, okay, I need to hit repeat right here. Or I need to skip to the next section. But I want to show you how, just like I'm talking now, you can talk freely, you could pray, you could walk in the congregation, whatever you need to do. And live's just going to repeat until you press in for next or any trigger on your MIDI controller to jump to that next section. So I want to show you how to do that really easily in Ableton Live to create a repeat section mid-song uh, multiple times in one song if you want and multiple times in one set. So obviously in Live we could loop a section by using our loop uh, bracket here if we did that. It's a great way to, to do this, but it's a little finicky in the Live setting because we want to be you know, as hands-off as we possibly can. We don't want to look like we're checking our email. I constantly talk about that and encourage people. Uh, don't let people know you're doing anything other than just staying on stage, leading worship, or playing guitar, playing keys. Don't let them see you fiddle with your computer. Uh, make it kind of an invisible thing. So we could do this loop bracket here, but it's uh, it's going to require us to move that around to turn it on and off. And it only works one time, right? We can't do it multiple times in our set without having to reach over here and do that again. So what I've come up with is, um, I think, a great solution to do this multiple times in a song, multiple times in a set. That's essentially to create a MIDI clip and assign it to the locator of the section you want to repeat. So in this case, I basically have a MIDI clip here with a MIDI note that when it hits, you'll see it just loops back to that intro. Place it in the last measure of the section I want it to repeat, and it's gonna loop over. And it's gonna continue to loop, even if it triggers. So I'll let it trigger. I'm gonna press in, which is for next locator. And so anytime in that last measure, I can decide if I wanna jump or not, or even if I'm halfway through, and press in again and go ahead and jump that. And that's just going to give me the ability to be really hands off, least amount of thought possible, and just, you know, get right into leading worship and focusing on that. So let me show you how I did this. I'm doing this on a Mac computer. So I'm going to use Apple's IAC driver, which is built into every Mac included for free. If you're on a PC, you could use a um, program called Loop BE1. I'll put the link in the comments for this video so you guys can see that. It's a free application that's a virtual MIDI port. The IEC driver stands for Inner Application Connectivity Device, and it's a, essentially a virtual MIDI port that's allowing us to route MIDI between one program to another, or in this case, uh, MIDI out of Ableton back into Ableton. So we're going to use MIDI clips within Ableton uh, to control various functions in live. And I'll be doing more videos as we go along showing you different cool things you can do with the IEC driver. But for now, let's talk about how to set up this repeat track. So first thing, I'm going to go into Spotlight, type Audio MIDI Setup, and just show you how this looks if you've never seen the IEC driver. Double click here. You want to make sure Devices Online is selected. Uh, your setup may look like this. If you want to click More Information, you could add more ports if you need it, but it's not necessary. Once you enable that, that's it. That's all you've got to do outside of Ableton. Once you get into Ableton, we can go into Preferences, which is up here, or Command Comma. We want to go to the MIDI sync section and we want to make sure for input that we've enabled remote and for output for IEC driver, we've enabled track. Basically, that means we want to send MIDI notes out of the IEC driver, out of live, and we want to receive those MIDI notes and use them to remotely control live. So that's why input for IEC driver is set to remote, output for IEC driver is set to track. Once we do that, we need to create a MIDI track. So I'm actually just going to clean this up and delete a few things. And I'm going to start from scratch to show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to create a MIDI track. Command Shift T is my shortcut. Or you could use the Create menu. Um, I'm going to name this Repeat. Then I need to create a MIDI clip. So I'm going to go to the last measure of the section I'm going to repeat. I'll select space, do Command Shift M, which is our shortcut to insert a MIDI clip in Arrangement View. Or again, we could use the Create menu to insert our MIDI track and our clip. For the sake of this example, I'm going to go all the way up and just double-click to create uh, G8 as my note. 
Then I'm going to go into mini map mode, which is up here in the right hand corner of our screen, or just by clicking command M as our shortcut. And then I just want to play this before our clip hits. Okay. Um, and actually, let me do one more thing before we do that. Let's go to our track here. And the MIDI 2 section, we have to make sure we send MIDI to our IEC driver. So I almost missed that. That's important to remember. Press tab, we'll go back over into arrangement view. Again, I'll start this before uh, where our clip hits. We'll do Command M. And before we hit that clip with the playhead, we want to click our locator. And you'll see when we do that, um, that we assigned note G8 right here to our intro locator. So now what that means, uh, we can press Command M to get back out of MIDI map mode, is when we hit that clip, it's gonna loop. And it's gonna continue to loop as long as that clip is there. And the one thing we wanna do, one more thing, is we either wanna assign a controller on our MIDI control or a key on our keyboard, like I've done in this case, to our next locator option. And that's gonna allow us to skip to our next locator. So in my case, I'm gonna press key up here. And you can see I've got R and N on my keyboard assigned to previous locator, which I'm thinking of as repeat, N as next locator. So what I can go in and do is press play. And you'll see that's gonna loop. And again, it's gonna continue to loop until I'm ready to stop it. Even if I wanna stop it um, halfway through, I'll press N to go to next locator, and that's gonna jump. So the cool thing about this, the powerful thing about this is unlike our loop brace here is we can have multiple MIDI clips throughout a song or even throughout our set. And we can kind of pre-think through this. Uh, we can have them planned out and then they'll just loop as long as we need them to. So this could be an open section. Um, you know, this is one of the things I always encourage people. They, they, a lot of people talk about, they want to have worship that's spirit led, or they want to open section or a section where they just kind of go where they feel like they need to go or a section where there can be open singing or just kind of whatever they want to do. And they feel constrained by click and loop. Um, well, this is a great way just to have a section go for however long you want it to be. It could be repeat one time, or it could repeat for five to 10 minutes if you wanted. And then whenever you're ready to break from that, you press one button. That's doesn't matter what song you're on. Doesn't matter what part of your set you're on. It just basically means next section and you can jump to that. So I think this is a great way to uh, make playing with tracks, a very hands-off, very freeing thing. And a great example of how we can use Ableton Live to not play two loops, but have the loops play to us. And we're going to play with them. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tip. Hopefully you can use it for uh, your worship services. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me, will at multitracks.com. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.